All right, all right. Here we go again. It's another week of From the Margins with Jimmy Afont and David Washington. Hello again, Jimmy. Good to see you. Good to be seen. Like to say that <laughs> Indeed. Oh, boy. We had Hurricane uh, Elaine, uh, Helene come through. <laughs> uh, and uh, I've seen some pictures uh, out of the panhandle and off the Gulf Coast, and uh, it doesn't look good. It's unfortunate. No, it sure doesn't look good at all. And the fact that we were basically spared here in Central Florida does not mean that we don't have a responsibility to our federal Floridians who are up there to help them and do whatever we can for them. Indeed. Indeed. You're 100% correct. Uh, let's hope that uh, for those who made it through, that they um, get the relief that they need. And, um, you know, God bless Florida. So speaking of uh, what's going on here in Florida, uh, we've got less than actually 45 days, maybe closer to 40 days as of this recording uh, until the November 5th election. How you feel? What, what's well, going on your mind? Well, let's start from the beginning. You could say there were 45 days or 43 days, but technically people could go and vote today. So how many people are going to early vote? How many people are going to vote by mail, which already should have their ballots? Let's, let's be blunt. Uh, the percentage that's going to vote on November 5th might be 30 to 40 percent tops. Mm -hmm. Sure. The rest is going to vote early, so... If you don't persuade them by the end of next week, you, you you might have a serious problem. If you don't convince people that they're better off voting X, Y, Z, you might have a problem. Because yeah. uh, once, the, once the ballot is, is sent, uh, you can send them all the literature you want, but you're wasting your time, money, and energy because they already voted. If they voted for you, you're wasting your time, energy, and money. If they voted against you, you're wasting your time, your energy, and your money. So... This is the week, in my opinion, that the campaigns should really concentrate on. Anything else or less than that, honestly, I don't, I don't foresee any way future for, for past that. Election day is more, now more of a formality, but yeah. the amount of people who have requested ballot by mail, at least in Orange, Osceola, and Seminole County, is large. There are a large amount of people who are probably going to vote early is large. So I, I would be honest, thinking that you have 45 days, it could be a crucial mistake if you're running a campaign. I agree with you. Uh, we had the military and overseas uh, out-of-state ballots go out last week. Um, and this week, the domestic, uh, Florida domestic uh, vote by mail ballots go out um, today. Uh, they can legally go out uh, today. So I'm sure we'll be seeing those ballots in the mailboxes. And I agree. Uh, if, uh, if you're not persuaded by now, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. However, on the campaign side, um, it's a matter of turnout now. Um, campaigns should know who their voters are, um, who their tried and true voters are, those hardcore supporters and voters that you know or you can count on your base. And then they should also have an idea of those voters who are on the peripheral, those individuals who maybe um, vote during general elections and most People, most voters do vote during the general election. And so um, you go after those folks and um, you um, deploy what, whatever appropriate and efficient tool that you decided in your campaign to get after those votes. And let's hope that the campaigns follow through with what you just said and what I said, because I'm <laughs> hearing that there are going to be big rallies and that, that uh, on. November 4th, and why? E e why? Yes, why? <laughs> why? Because at that point, uh, most people who like to vote uh, in person 
are very people who are already committed by mind what they're going to do to. So realistically, it's good for the campaign. It shows that there's uh, of power out there that shows that there's energy, all these other things, only to face that you didn't run your campaign effectively. This is the week that you need to be calling. You need to be sending out mail and everything. Let's get honest. You're right. Today goes out the ballots for locals. Today should go out your literature for those who are receiving a vote by mail. And for the record, we all know, all you have to do is that request that information from the supervisor election. It is public records. It's not, oh, this is something sacred, like that some people try to pretend. No, it, it isn't. You go there, you know who it is, and literally they will be telling you, uh, David Washington voted. You scratch him out of your list. Maybe That's right. see James so far. Ballot, you scratch them out of your list. You call these people, you knock on their doors and everything else. The other thing is that if you're like a district one, three or five, you make sure that the eight or nine early voting sites that might attract people from district five, that you have people there contacting them, making sure that they vote, that they have the information, particularly that they down vote because many of them might go in there to vote for the president and maybe even for a senator or their congressman, but they they tend not to go further down, get them to go down, work uh, as much as you can with uh, with, uh, the uh, uh, other state campaigns and making sure that they're they're there and helping you. But the other issue is I I would like to see what the people who are trying to follow through on the... uh, County amendments, what what their strategy has been, because I have not seen it at all. Okay. I have received literature for yeah. three, four. That's it. One and two, I've received nothing. Right. I've received, um, I don't think I've received anything since the primary uh, for any of the uh, amendment initiatives. And uh, that includes the Florida constitutional amendments and the Orange County um, uh, charter amendments. So, and I'm a super duper voter. And so am I, I, and and, you know, again, this is what I'm trying to prove here, Dave, is next week people will be voting. Yes. And if you have not sent your literature to these people who will be voting, you're committing political malpractice. And I'm afraid to to say, however, it's the truth. You're right. It it is um, political malpractice, unfortunately. Folks, uh, this should be, and I've always said, by the Saturday before Election Day, a campaign should know where it stands as far as its probability of winning. Um, the, the, the data is there. You do the appropriate an- analysis, which I'm not going to give away because I get paid to do that. However, um, there is a way to predict um, if you're going to win or not. Um, and if you are able to assess that based on the data that is present and the data, uh, historical data, um, you should be moving towards that direction. And right now, as we've been talking about, it's very, very crucial that uh, campaigns uh, in these waning days of the election cycle uh, chase after those um, vote by mail ballots, uh, make sure that people um, get to the early voting sites, if they intend to get to the early voting sites by making sure that that information is available on the campaign's uh, own website, which of course will be on the local supervisor of elections website, but the campaign's website and their socials. And you just put that, you know, you just make sure on the socials that that information is going out every day as a reminder. And then again, chase at the people who you know have requested, requested a vote by mail ballot, keep chasing after them and uh, make sure that they do turn in their ballot. Um, and then those that you identified as early voters, uh, let them know that you do, ex- you do exist and you know chase after them too. 
Yeah, and, 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 and that's what you need to do. At this point, very soon, your ability to raise funds is going to be disappeared, gone. Mm-hmm. At that point, uh, my phone will stop ringing less often with texts asking me for money from uh, every other place in the, on the, under the scum. So it's, that's one thing. Right. You are wrapping up. Now is the time that you take your computer, you take your laptop, you send out 200 emails every five minutes to the people that you know that you think mm-hmm. might vote for you. Do it. And even if they don't open it, but they say it's David Washington <coughs> and the subject is please vote for me, and you you you, you accomplish your you go. Opening it is not exactly what you, you it's the ultimate goal, but it's not necessarily. Yeah, and right. how much does that cost you? Relatively nothing. You know, uh the problem is that sometimes people tend to think in the old terms of how to run a campaign. And the old terms of running a campaign is not working anymore. It has mm-hmm. not worked for the last two elections. Okay? It's not That's right. at all. So I, what else do we think is happening in Florida that we need to discuss? Oh, boy. So, you know, we've uh, got early voting, which we've talked about. Um, again, uh, Jimmy, this is a an election cycle that has been perplexing to me. For everything that is at stake, according to the different campaigns, and it, and it's uh, essential. Uh, what's the word? I can't even think of it right now. Existential crisis. You know, um, there is silence. There, there is very little conversation. Um, I don't see, you know, the yard signs and and other um, publicity out in the streets. Uh, I think that's because partly because uh, different uh, municipalities and the uh, counties have uh, cracked down on yard signs in public spaces. Uh, but still, I'm I'm not seeing yard signs um, on lawns and uh, throughout the county as I used to. I did. Oh, I, I meant to post this the other day. But I did see um, a yard sign um, in the uh, Thornton Park area, um, two yard signs. Uh, one was uh, Representative Anna Escamani's, and the other was um, candidate for uh, Orange County District 5, uh, uh, Steve Leary and I took a picture of that. I was like, "Wow, that that is a that that's a, a contradiction in politics." There, it was very very odd to see. However, you know, we do see the uh, the dichotomy of um, of uh, issues and candidates, and maybe there's a personal relationship uh, with one of the candidates or even both of the candidates, whereas they put those signs in their yards. But definitely you're looking at two opposite ends of the political spectrum. I just, I found that uh, a little bit humorous. Well, yeah. And and that is not the first time last uh, cycle. I saw Anna Scamantes sign with a Donald Trump sign the same in Winter Park, which that one blew my mind, but (laughs) (laughs) made no sense. But, it, it, go, it goes to show that, you know, elections are, are local and, uh, you know, you may favor, you know, someone like uh, an Eskimani at the local level. Uh, but nationally, you think that the nation's in better hands with, you know, Donald J. Trump. So, yeah, that, that is uh, quite funny. Um, and, and speaking of voters, um, we have m- the media. Uh, legacy media, media, forever talking about, and I think they realize it's a very slow uh, and, and relatively quiet election cycle. But every other uh, news show, news opinion show, is talking about polling and talking about these undecideds, which I've called the unpersuadables. And the polling shows on the national level 
a neck and neck race between the two presidential candidates. And of course, the polling is different in other areas. Um, but at the national level, um, it, it, we hear a great conversation about the on the uh, the um, unpersuadables or the um, um, undecideds. What what's going on there, Jimmy? Uh, two things. One, you and I are political junkies. I have never received a call or anything in the mail asking me my political opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, but I've never. And everybody that I know, I go, hey, have you ever? No, I've never been pulled. Hey, I've no. Yet. So I, at times I wonder if these are manufactured, but that's beside the point. Uh, 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 who picks up the phones? Uh, I mean, right now, if I said phone number, I don't recognize you and I let it go to voicemail. Uh, yes. That's, that's, that's the truth. So the, I'm not sure who is picking up what areas and what are you doing now. How reliable are uh, our polls? Even the people talking on TV say that the last two elections, they haven't been very reliable. That's their even right. comment. Yeah, they're not reliable. Of course they're not reliable because they're manufactured. Uh, the truth of the matter <coughs> is that right now, people are entrenched in their own parks. Those who are going to vote for Trump are going to vote for Trump. Those who are going to vote for Harris, I'm going to vote for Harris. Yeah, there's a small percentage of people, and I'm going to call them out, that think that they both don't persuade them to vote. And there are a bunch of people who are sick and tired of voting for the least of two evils. Yes. So, yes, the question is, should be more asked, are you going to vote? There's one issue that is never discussed by the media because... It's not in their best interest to discuss it, but you have a more than a 45% of the U.S. population who in 2020 did not vote. Oh, the pandemic, and not, not really. The year before, it was 42%. So it, it was a little higher. Maybe you could blame the pandemic, but I'm not sure how much could you. <clears throat> the truth of the matter is that there's a lot of people who are fed up don't have a leader, don't they they don't see either of them as, as their leader, so they really might not vote. And if you call them, they say I'm undecided, you might want to ask them, well, are you gonna vote? Because if they say probably not, then don't count them in, in a tabulation. Because realistically, yes. And when you say, well, there's only 48 and 45, look, that's high. Because right. we know that we that we are deciding elections with 50 plus one and pushing it nationwide. So it is, unless you can get a, 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 bad, a bad money, your elections are, are, are a fry. <laughs> Good point, bad money in Puerto Rico. Oh yeah, <laughs> he put his own money, he's put up billboards and he's trying to motivate the people saying, hey, this party failed you, this party failed you. It's time for a change. And, he's, and, and even the elder are listening to it. So, <laughs> good, good for Bad Bunny. You know, good for Bad Bunny. Not a, not a, uh, is it Bad Bunny? Not a big fan of, uh, uh, of uh, Bad Bunny. However, I do like the fact that he is advocating, you know, for people to uh, be civically engaged. And so, oh, good for and him. He, and he has an audience there. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, not for his music. That's oh, where people okay. get confused. He he goes to a town around the island, sits down with a laptop, bring me your, your electrical bills. People will bring him his electrical bills. He would just take his credit card and he will pay them for them. Uh, get yeah. out. And he, and he says, well, you know, I have more money than I can spend. Let me spend something useful. That is his answer. So, yeah, he, he has a following there. That's awesome. That, that's really awesome. Wow. That is very awesome. Jimmy, um, speaking of polling and these uh, undecideds and unpersuadables, have you seen any polling specifically for Florida and, and Central Florida and Orange County in particular? No. Let me tell you why. 
So mm-hmm. the Democratic Party doesn't have the funds. They're wasting on other things. They ne- uh, they never want they never have spent any money on polling. That's uh, Debbie's campaign, which might want to poll Florida, I don't think has the resources to do so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I mean that respectfully. I don't mean that that she is not interested. She just uh, doesn't have the resources. And basically, uh, the Harris campaign realizes they're not going to win Florida, so they're not going to spend any money on right. polling in Florida. So right. it's 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 the perfect storm, like I like to say. You know, uh, I can't think of any candidate in Orange County has any money to do any polling. Uh, no, I I, I agree. I mean, um, I am sure that the I'm, I'm pretty sure that the uh, Republicans are always polling. They they are their campaigns are driven by polling. I and, don't think uh, I don't think they did. I think the hotel players did. Okay, sure. sure. And they're only really scared. They are. They are. Yes. Uh, the amount of investment that was alleged to be in. Uh, the District 1, the District 5, and the District 3 races. I haven't seen it. I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, they're like, okay, we're going to scratch out, you know, David Walsh's name on our list uh, because he talks too much on his podcast. But, it, however, Jimmy, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing, you know, the dollars in the community. I, I really, I'm really not. Well, I, I walk my community and I've asked, hey, have you received any literature? None. Mm-hmm. I live in the district and I talk to my neighbors. I, I have relatives who live in the district. I have two nieces, a brother-in-law and a sister-in-law who live in the district who are registered voters, all super voters, and none of them have received anything. Amazing. So, no, it's not there. It's amazing. And we're right in the thick of uh, the peak hurricane season. So, you know, there's three disturbances out in the Atlantic and in the Carib. You know, anything can happen. You want to get ahead if you're going to use mailers, which, again, is an old technology. Um, you better get those things out there or they're going to be right in the garbage or flying all over the place during the next tropical storm or hurricane. I, I, I just don't get it, Jimmy. I really don't. I and- do. I do. I, I think that they're thinking that they could do it at the last moment and it's going to be persuasive. I, I received four mailers from Steve Flory on Saturday, the Monday of, before the election, and, I'm, and on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And if they're going to waste their money doing that, they're stupid. Unfortunately, yeah. Yes, and, and and speaking of C. Leary and and all of the uh, county commission commissioner uh, candidates, um, they are earning um, earned media. Uh, the Orlando Signal seems to be a mouthpiece uh, for um, the uh, Democrat or the liberal candidates. Uh, I it, I think a, a week hasn't passed, and sometimes it's been every other other day that there's an article about or a uh, opinion piece or a blog piece, uh, either from the Orlando Sidno or uh, someone adjacent to the Sidno, uh, speaking about you know okay you know we've got. You know, these three candidates who uh, refuse to answer questions about what they'll do for the um, uh, ho- uh, the hospitality and, and, and lodging um, community uh, businesses. And, but we've got three who already said that, you know, they're not going to do or go out of their way for that particular lobby. And uh, and then of course we got the annexation issues uh, between Orlando City, Deseret Ranch uh, development, and also <coughs> Orange County. So it seems like there is a concerted effort by the Orlando Signal to keep some of these issues in the news and drum up some type of uh, uh, excitement uh, to persuade people to come out to vote. Oh, they did it the last turn around, and we keep forgetting. That's why Betsy's no longer a commissioner. They keep bringing Mm -hmm. out all her conflicts of interest, all her contracting companies and how they were doing business with the people they were approving uh, to get permits to to build and stuff like that. Yeah. 
the uh, Sentinel Sent- the, the is trying to demonstrate that they are trying to be as as pro the community as they can, uh, even though it's a, a newspaper that I hate to say is disappearing. I mean, like most written media, is disappearing. It's not because they're not doing a good job. It's because most written media disappeared. I mean, nobody under fifty really reads a newspaper. Let's let's put it bluntly. Mm-hmm. Everybody reads it online. As a matter of fact, I think there's more subscriptions on the Orlando Sentinel online than there are of people receiving the newspaper. That's true. And if I remember their demographics correctly, their uh, demographic uh, that is subscribed to the Sentinel is on average 46 years old, um, upper uh, middle class uh, demographic uh, professionals. And um, it doesn't, you know, and it doesn't really reach a broad um, subscriber base, let alone the broad uh, um, electoral base. No, it doesn't. And that's why you would look at the at, at this week's Sentinel. You're going to see no political advertisements. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's just yes. a matter. You know, nobody who knows anything about campaign would say, hey, let's put a thousand dollar ad in the Sentinel. It's not going to help you at all. It's not. It's just not. Uh, and uh, the Sentinel has been, um, uh, <laughs> they've been wrong on a lot of their endorsements also. Uh, and uh, I, I, it, it's hard to forgive them for some of those decisions uh, because it, it appears that, uh, you know, somebody was whispering in their ear. And I know for a fact that, you um, you know, there are certain members of the community that they do talk to on a regular basis, but not a broad uh, demographic of people to get them a, a better understanding of the larger uh, populace. That I do know for sure. Yeah. And, and, and to be quite honest, uh, it used to be called the kiss of death, uh, their endorsements. Uh, it started to take some more better effect. In the two, from the 2000, I would say six to to present, but still there there's some endorsements that you just sit there and, and look at them. Uh, but yeah. at the same time, they're what I would call logical. I remember the first time that em, uh, Emily ran and she ran against an incumbent who was well liked by the media because he responded to their questions yeah. and was a personable person. Uh, his Political decision was stupid, but that's that was a, an issue for another day. But uh, that they did endorse a somebody that most people did not give most much of a chance, if we're going to be honest, uh, o- over him. So yes, that 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 is the same. Uh, the same with what happened with Maribel. The same happened with uh, uh, e- even. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of. Even Nicole, I don't think Nicole got the endorsement the first time around. Um, I think because they were so involved in uh, reporting uh, Commissioner Vanderlei's uh, perceived conflicts that they did endorse her, if I remember correctly, uh, just by the sheer fact that, you know, they were, you know, given information. Oh, yeah, you're right. The, they, they, mm-hmm. her, her endorsement was how bad Bessie was. You're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yep. It was the pandemic year and, um, you know, the, it was low voter engagement engagement because of uh, COVID and uh, people um, just weren't reached the way that they usually were. And that was sensational um, reporting that got people motivated in District 1. Yeah. And particularly during the pandemic when people were reading more because they were not they couldn't be outside. That's right. That's correct. You're right, Jimmy. You're right. Um, I know. I, and I, I look at the scene, though. I look at their past endorsements, which is available online. And I look at the people that they endorse in the past. And then I look at their current reporting. And even with Scott Maxwell, um, and, and I say, wait a second, you, you guys are railing against the same people that you endorsed for elected office and they won. I'm saying, okay, are they wrong? Are these elected officials wrong now? Or, and you had a change of heart? 
or you just didn't do your due diligence in asking the right questions and talking to the right people to let you know that, okay, this is really what this particular candidate is moving in this type of way versus the other type of way. And I particularly bring that up in regards to um, city of Orlando elections. Well, in the city of Orlando elections, let's see. Has there really been any candidates running? Uh, when was the last time that uh, the mayor had a contested election? Uh, I can't remember, really. Uh, he, Buddy Dyer just goes and comes and nobody really runs against him. Uh, uh, he, right now, in the past election, I, I cannot other than there was an election because there was a removal of an incumbent. Okay, let's, let's be, there was an election there, but right, right. to be honest, there, elections in, in, uh, in the city of Orlando are a joke, and some of the crazy people who put their names in uh, scare the daylight out of a lot of people. <laughs> well, true. between this crazy person and this mm, not so nice person, I'll go with the not so nice person. And that's right. one of the things that has always fascinated me. I know that um, Buddy Dyer, uh, Mayor Dyer, has had um, competition um, last year. I believe uh, Sam Ings ran again. Uh, I forgot the name of the Republican. Um, I think his last name is Smith, but I may be incorrect. Uh, I met him at Orange County Watch, and I can't remember his name. Uh, he started late, but uh, Sam Ings ran again, former Commissioner Ings. And before that, uh, we had uh, um, four years ago, six years ago, we had um, Aretha Simons and Sam Ings again. And, um, you know, the, the turnout is horrible. It's typically under 18, 15%. And, on uh, purpose. Um, yes, that's correct, on purpose. And uh, it, it favors uh, the incumbents uh, across the board. Um, yeah. And, of course, the Lando Signal has given the stamp of approval on every single last one of them. And now... Yeah, well, uh, let's be honest. Uh, Compared to the experience that Buddy Dyer has as mayor and the compliments that the city has done, not him, but the city, uh, you know, Smith, you're right, he came in late, and I was not even sure for what he's standing for, to be blunt, because right. he really never got into that issue that much. He was more Buddy Dyer sucks, so let well, walk me in, which I think is a strategy that's never worked, but some people still think it does. Uh, and, yeah. and Inks, uh, hey, he lost the first time, and he ran the second time, committing the same, ca the same campaign, uh, just to prove that Einstein is correct. <laughs> and that's the theory of uh, definitely well, not. The, 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 that is uh, the, the definition of insanity: is repeating yeah. the same act, <laughs> expecting a different result. He ran this, both campaigns the same way. Yeah, he okay. did. He did. So, and, you know, uh, I, I don't understand it. And uh, it seems like uh, when the candidates uh, run for office and create these campaigns, uh, they don't realize uh, that it's political science, not just political, but there's a science to this. Oh, but there is a science. And they, but they, in, in their mind, they're the good guy, they're the ones going to bring change. Uh, and the other guy is bad, and really all I have to do is follow certain patterns that have been set down for the last 25 years, and I should win. And not that, not that easy. Sorry, it's not really not that easy. I At understand. All. I understand. Well, um, any final thoughts? Well, we're in the final race of this campaign. I'm going to predict that on election day, you and I will be surprised of nothing. And if anything, in the next two weeks, let's pray that nobody screws up. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But other than that, I'm 
at this point thinking that next week what we need to concentrate is in the national elections. Okay. I really am concerned that I think that both sides are kind of cocky that they're going to win. And again, you say political science. This is not about Florida. Florida is not going to be one. This is about Georgia, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, and uh, oh, I'm forgetting one state. North Carolina. North Carolina is yeah, North Carolina. Those states will make it or break it, okay? And I really think that uh, the two ones that are going to become the more crucial ones are mm-hmm. Arizona and our uh, North Carolina, in which I'm going to put my mouth where my money is. Both of the polls are wrong. Mm-hmm. Let me put it this way. In Arizona, I've talked to two of my friends. There's been zero, zero, zero polling in the Hispanic community. Really? Yep. It's all been in the affluent community. It's all been in the big cities. But yeah, registered voters are more than 50 years old. Mm Mm-hmm. So they won't call you, David. Yeah, they won't, I guess. Again, Jimmy, this is uh, the the oddest election cycle that I've experienced in, you know, my, what, 30-odd years of... uh, Odder than 2016? Yes, odder than uh, 2016. I believe it. Federal Democrats had hotel reservations for... uh, the DC. <laughs> I hey, all I remember is winning that day, uh, election night, and seeing a lot of uh, uh, long faces, long Democratic faces that night. Um, I, I was telling my mother the other day that I saw a lot of Trump signs on lawns, people's lawns, not on the parkways, not on public spaces, but on people's lawns. That's why I saw, you know, a Trump sign next to an Emily Bonilla sign. I was like, something's going on. And I, I remember telling my mom, I was like, don't, don't underestimate Donald Trump. And November election night, Donald Trump wins. And that's why I keep telling people, do not underestimate. Anything can happen, okay? Even though I must say one thing. I'm more impressed this time around with the machinery of the Democrats than I was in 2016 and in 2020. Okay. That's good. That's good. One anecdotal story I have, I looked at my circle um, of friends and relatives and... I see a slight advantage, a very anecdotal, informal poll of these individuals. And there are more Donald Trump supporters (coughs) than Kamala Harris supporters. And most of these individuals are Democrats. That's a good thing. And uh, I was like, Wow, they're they are looking at Donald Trump harder than they have in t- 2020. That's, that's, that, memories are short. Remember that. That's true. That's true. That's true. So, um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about in our next show? Other than the national elections, I think we could we could have more than enough to cut with that one. Indeed. Indeed. Excellent, Jimmy. Well, again, I really appreciate it. Um, This has been... So that's really great. And uh, I'm looking forward to next week. And to our audience, thank you for being with us again. Uh, This is From the Margins uh, with James Afant and David Washington. And please, 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 please... 
take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast and all podcasts across the Jay and Washington Network. And of course, let us know what you have to say. I love the comments. We'll love to respond to them. Let's keep it respectful. Let's keep it tactful. And um, let's just have an honest conversation um, based on facts and not feelings. So again, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll see you the next time. See you next time. Take care. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye now.